Welcome to this General Electric CF680E1A4 slash B turbo fan performance evaluation. My name is Mark Scythian. The date today is January 21st, 2022. This performance evaluation is predicated on evaluation parameters 1 through 17. The latest version of the CF6 gas turbo fan jet engine is the ADE1A4 slash B with significantly higher performing specifications as listed on the right, including the engine testing facility environmental data used with calculating these evaluation metrics. So we can start with the performance evaluation. Feel free to pause each slide when need be because the final data will be specified based on the calculated proofs. So first we have to differentiate isentropic and polytropic data for which the simplified definitions include the isentropic data pertains to the minimum theoretical values as if the compressor was isolated from the rest of the components, whereas the polytropic data is the real world data as in what you would get if you actually experimentally measured the temperature and the pressure changes in accordance to integrative reaction with all other components in the engine. So the polytropic data is the real world actual specifications as opposed to the theoretical isentropic thermodynamic metrics. So the first thing we need to do is run the calculations to compute the cubic feet per minute airflow into the compressor only when the engine is at maximum throttle which is 296,742 cubic feet per minute of airflow intake into the compressor. Next we compute the polytropic compressor efficiency and for this axial flow compressor spool configuration a polytropic compressor efficiency of 77.4% is calculated. Next, we have to identify and prove that the isentropic exponent K for air is 1.4 based on accessing the heat capacity ratio for air, the gamma value. We do indeed prove that the isentropic exponent K for air is equal to 1.4. We then next compute the polytropic exponent n based on starting with the equation in 5a followed by the algebraic and substitution iterations yielding 1.58 to equal the n value or the polytropic exponent which is a function of the polytropic compressor efficiency which was calculated earlier. Next, we compute the isotropic compressor discharge air temperature, the minimum theoretical value. Upon doing so, 947 degrees Fahrenheit is calculated. Next, we calculate the isentropic compressor air temperature rise, the delta T, or the difference between the compressor discharge air temperature and the outside intake air. So isentropically, that value will equal 887 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we compute the isentropic or adiabatic compressor efficiency. And upon doing so, the calculated proofs yield 66% isentropic compressor efficiency. Next is the polytropic compressor discharge air temperature, which is the actual air temperature you would measure if you had a temperature sensor placed at the discharge nozzle of the compressor. So based on the calculated proofs and pressure ratio in conjunction with the polytropic exponent, 1,410 degrees Fahrenheit will be the temperature of the air as it discharges from this particular compressor on this particular turbo fan. Next is the polytropic compressor air temperature rise, simply the compressor discharge air temperature uh, 
subtracting or the outside air temperature subtracted from the compressor discharge air temperature so the compressor is raising 361 pounds per second of mass airflow and increasing its temperature from 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 1410 or a temperature rise of 1350 all in the time span of one second. This then yields a polytrophic compressor horsepower of 165,451 to keep the engine lit when at maximum throttle, predicated on 0.24 BTUs. At, uh, 0.24 BTUs is the heat required to raise one pound of mass air by one degree Fahrenheit times the temperature rise or the delta T polytropically times the mass air flow into the compressor times the number of foot-pounds per second mechanical power per 1 BTU per second divided into 550, the number of foot-pounds per second to 1 horsepower. So the compressor horsepower at max throttle is 165,451 actual in terms of horsepower. Uh, isentropic compressor horsepower as the minimum theoretical value as if the compressor was isolated. So of course a much lower uh, compressor horsepower, uh, almost approaching 109,000, so 108,707 horsepower. Next we compute the fuel consumption at max throttle for polytropic compressor horsepower maintenance to keep the engine lit. So that's a function of the turbine efficiency. We calculate 6.6 .6 pounds per second JP4 kerosene fuel consumption when at maximum throttle at static conditions. So about 94% of this fuel input is consumed to power the compressors, low and high speed compressors. So that yields 6.2 pounds per second of fuel consumption of the 6.6 .6 pounds per second is used to keep the engine lit by maintaining the 165,000 451 compressor horsepower and thus a polytropic turbine efficiency of 94%. We use the same methodology and calculation iterations to compute the isentropic compressor horsepower fuel consumption and isentropic turbine efficiency so we yield 4.1 pounds per second to theoretically keep the compressor running when at max throttle and thus the engine lit, so that yields a 62% isentropic turbine efficiency. Next we compute the jet velocity based on solving the static thrust formula function for V2 or jet velocity and at maximum throttle the jet velocity will equal 1178 feet per second accelerating 1,913 pounds of mass airflow to a final velocity of 1,178 feet per second in a time span of one second. Next we compute the net thrust when at 180 mile per hour V1 rotate liftoff speed right before the aircraft is going airborne. So that is simply the forward airspeed V1 in feet per second. So we convert 180 miles per hour to feet per second. We subtract that from the jet velocity when at maximum throttle times the mass airflow entering both the fan and the core, and then divide that into the U.S. imperial units for gravitational acceleration of 32.2 feet per second squared to yield 54,301 pounds of net thrust when at 180 mile per hour takeoff roll. Next we calculate the fuel consumption at max throttle while the engine is held at rest or at static condition. The thrust specific fuel consumption is 0.339 pounds per pound of thrust per hour. We previously calculated 6.6 .6 pounds per second fuel consumption when at static conditions. Calculating the fuel consumption at 180 mile per hour runway takeoff roll at V1 rotate right before liftoff 
is calculated at 5.1 pounds per second JP4 fuel consumption, slightly less than at the static conditions. Next, we have the overall efficiency at max throttle while the engine's held at rest. So we then solve for the acceleration of 1913 pounds of mass airflow to a final jet velocity of 1178 feet per second in a time span of one second. So that can that is only applicable when the engine is held at rest, or else we'll have to use thrust horsepower when the engine's actually moving forward. So based on the calculated proofs and iterations, we compute a and overall efficiency at max throttle while the engine's held at rest of 43%. The overall efficiency at the 180 mile per hour max throttle takeoff roll V1 rotate to liftoff is computed at 15% based on the calculated proofs. Next, and the last calculation for this performance evaluation is the overall efficiency when the A330 is at cruise conditions at 36,000 feet MSL, cruising at 575 miles per hour. The approximate thrust specific fuel consumption at cruise conditions is 0.545 pounds kerosene jet fuel per pound of thrust per hour relevant to the A330, as well as a approximated cruise net thrust of, a pro uh, of around 12,000 pounds net thrust. So based on the calculated proofs, we compute a significantly high overall efficiency of 39% during cruise, which is quite impressive. Great improvement to the CF6 from the CF6-6 days now with the ADE1 A4 slash B applicable to the Airbus A330. So here are the final calculated performance specifications of this evaluation for the General Electric CF6 ADE1 A4 slash B implemented on the Airbus A330 and these are the calculated specifications per engine. So the Maximum fuel consumption at maximum throttle during static conditions for two engines on the A330 is simply 6.6 .6 pounds per second fuel consumption times two. And everything else relatively stays at a parallel constant except for the fuel consumption, which is a cumulative function and is in series. So these two values will be added together if you're curious about fuel consumption at static conditions for the Airbus A330 using this particular turbofan jet engine. Thank you for watching this evaluation presentation. Let me know if there's any other heat engines that you were curious about having a presentation focusing on evaluation performance metrics, and I will make one and publish it onto my YouTube channel. Also, visit my other YouTube videos if you're curious about the principle of operation of gas turbofan jet engines. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.